That's the part in, in mysticism and when you start dealing with Hindu masters and mystic priests and time no longer exists, space no longer exists, and, and, you, and you become aware that you are an immortal person, a spirit living in a, a non-linear existence. Uh, you keep catching up with yourself in time, you learn about yourself, uh, eventually you discover that uh, you've, always, you've always known who you were that the learning process requires that you don't know everything about who you are and so you sort of pick it up as you go along. Welcome to Jay and Beyond the Rocks. And welcome to Indiana, the mystical state. Yes, where we are right now. Jay, bartender me. Yes, and I am B. I'll be your editor. We wanted to welcome you to this TV show. Jay and Beyond the Rocks. Which you're watching now. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're here in the state of Indiana, the mystical state. And look behind us. There is something that you don't normally see. Yes, mysticism in Indiana. And that's what this, the theme of this episode is, is and uh, let us delve into that immediately right now. Here, go. There's always been something mystical about Indiana. Really? Uh, is it India? Is, does it mean New India? Uh, why is it that uh, Indianapolis uh, has the Archangel Michael at the top of the circle? You know, what's all this about? Who is this man? Who is this man? Who? Who, me? That's, 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 that's who a question. he is. Me. That's the answer. Me, myself. You. J. Okay. B. He. Who is this man? Who is this man? Well, I was born into this life uh, in 1951, the year that Superman came to Earth, uh, in the uh, Queen of Angels Hospital in the City of Angels under the sign of justice. I was given the name Roger, which means Soldier of Christ. So far as Donovan Von Jennings, that's my ordained name uh, with the Roman Catholic Church, they sort of took me by surprise uh, during my ordination, informing me that after I'd been ordained, I had to select a name that I would be known by to the Roman Catholic Church. When I uh, entered into a uh, student relationship with Rudrananda in 1972 on my 20-year commitment to explore. At the end of that time, I was to select my own name. Uh, Rudrananda would have given me a name, but Rudrananda was going to be dead by that time. So I was given permission to decide what name reflected uh, my relationship in this life. I chose the name Rudentara Yogananda. Uh, Rudentara means Rudy and Earth, or Rudy of the Earth, since I had agreed to the transmigration. And of course, Yogananda is uh, the speller of darkness and God's bliss. So, Rudentara Yogananda is where that came about. Who is Rudrananda? Well, uh, now he was a guy that lived here in Bloomington, right? Yeah, he was a he was a Hindu guy. Yeah, yeah. Actually, he wrote a book called Spiritual Cannibalism, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, that book, in fact, is at the Monroe County Public Library. Right. If you want to check it out. So he was a big. It's guy a very interesting book here in Bloomington. Yeah. And then he was killed in a plane crash, right, in 1973. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that's where this character comes in, right? Uh, Rudy Rudentara, and uh, and supposedly he he uh, or. Rudrananda's soul transmigrated to Rudentara. Okay, he was also known as what was his name? Roger. Ralph. Roger. Roger. <laughs> Rudrananda was an enlightened priest, or what I would actually call a, a Buddha, an enlightened spirit. Rudy was, of course, uh, spent a lot of time here in Bloomington and had restaurants here in Bloomington and uh, a lot of different 
uh, woodworking shops and other businesses here and contributed to the community. Uh, La Rue Renata was a very powerful spirit, uh, very much aware. And uh, he uh, transmigrated to me. This week's vocabulary word is transmigration. Transmigration, yes, that's, uh, that's uh, where something transmigrates to something else. Transmigration. This week's vocabulary word is transmigration. To transmigrate, for all practical interpretations, means you're immortal. It's a symbiotic relationship. Uh, I transmigrate to another priest. That priest has their life, which is a question that I asked Rude Renanda, a very important question to me. I was, I was concerned. Nobody had ever asked to live in my body before. And uh, I asked myself, well, Master Rudy, I said, will I lose consciousness if I agree to this? He said, oh, no, no. He said, we'll just live as one. He goes, I'll be very quiet. I won't make any noise. I won't bother you. I said, OK. I said, but like, let me ask you. I was, very, I was 20 years old. I said, if I make love to a woman, are you watching? He said, well, yes. He goes, I like to make love to women, too. I said, oh. And uh, it takes a lot of strength to accept another spirit into your body and not completely lose your mind. I mean, there's, there is a period of time when you have to negotiate as to who's going to be the dominant force and, you know, what we're having for dinner. OK, this is all pretty confusing. So let's recapitulate. Rude Renanda was this guy, see, who wrote this book called Spiritual Cannibalism. And uh, he was a spiritual leader of sorts, a teacher. He had an ashram here in Bloomington and several other cities around the country. He was a, a Hindu kind of guy, I guess. And, um, well, he died in a plane crash in 1973. Now, that's where this guy comes in. He's got a couple of different names. He was born Roger Berlin but he also calls himself uh, Rudentera Yogananda, and he claims to be the transmigratory vessel for Rudrananda's soul. Uh, he also claims to be the last uh, exorcist ordained by the Vatican, and a field operations director for the CIA, and, well, a number of things, really. If you say, well, well what am I? Well, I'm like uh, a master spy for the CIA with the ability to create illusions. Okay, so check it out. 1973. Yeah. Well, 1973 is the year that I infiltrated the federal government. You sort of knock on the door and act a little bit ignorant, a little bit stupid, a little bit patriotic, uh, not daring to tell them, oh, by the way, uh, I'm an immortal spirit traveling through time, and you couldn't believe in your wildest imaginations what I can do. You know, hey, you guys want to play politics? Let's play politics, you know. Look, George, I was dealing with George Bush, the director of the CIA. <laughs> I said, look, George, here's the deal. There's going to be a war. Like, the whole planet's going to be blown up, and I think it's a really good idea if we stop it. And uh, George sort of looked at me and said, so who are you? I said, well, sort of like a time traveler in a way, George. He said, from the future? I said, ah, the future, the past, it doesn't really matter. I said, the bottom line is, you know, that little line in the Bible where the Lord says, I'm going to send a helper. Hi, George, I'm here. <laughs> Now, I'm just playing with the CIA. You know, I'm trying to understand, I'm just playing a game with them. With a very high IQ, I'm playing a game. I've read everything there is to know about this character in the Bible that's supposed to come. Now, the trick is to make them believe I'm the character. And uh, by using my abilities, my telepathy abilities, my connection with God, I could simply create this illusion. So for 20 years now, I've been spending this time creating that illusion with the Central Intelligence Agency. Uh, 73 was the beginning, 93 is the end, and I think the fun part now is not even they know what the truth is at this point. They can't figure it out. Roger also has special powers, like stopping time, yeah. in people's minds. He can do alpha programming. Did you know that? Right. So, um, yeah, just like the drinks that we mix here on j and on the Rocks have special powers sometimes. Now, yeah. of course, we're just joking around. Yeah, but, yeah, but uh, he's serious. But what so, about this Roger character? I don't know, but we're going to joke around here now and kind of have a silly segment. Yeah. Uh, so that's yeah. what's coming up next. Check it out. Gosh, B, I wonder if I should cut this big fatty neck skin off here, or if I should leave it on there. I mean, look at this. This is the skin to this duck's neck. It's pretty long, and uh, it's just fat. But, you know, it might get nice and crunchy and tasty, so I wonder what we should do with it. Well, is it hurting anything? Um, no, no. 
Well, then fuck, leave it on there, man. Okay. Why are you so hostile? I guess I shouldn't be hostile toward this poor duck's next fat skin thing. Well, fuck a duck. Ah! <laughs> this is my little friend, Jolene. Without Jolene, you'd know of my true East German heritage. This way I can just pretend I'm a good old-fashioned American girl. No facial hair here. God, up close and personal. This is a big dose of reality. I hope you can handle it out there. Some of us have to work a little harder than others at uh, achieving the standard of beauty. <laughs> hey, look, it's his lymph node. Here, I'm going to pluck that off and eat it right here on Jane Beyond the Rocks. Hmm, how's that taste? <sighs> mm -mm. Don't ever taste that. It's awful. Ah, uh, Bloomington, Bloomington. A town nestled here in the rolling hills of southern Indiana. Yes, Indiana. The mystical state. The state that you're in right now, probably, if you're watching this. The state that we're in, certainly. A state that's just chock full of all kinds of unexpected things. Like, uh, well, like this thing, for example. This is a chorten. It's a Tibetan shrine. So this Tibetan culture center, it's something that you wouldn't expect to find out here in the middle of southern Indiana, but you know there's a lot of strange and mystical things about Indiana. And uh, we're going to actually show you another one of those things right now. Well, look at that pretty building in there. Wow, check out that pretty building that we're looking at. And that Isn't sure nice? is a pretty building. I like that building mm -hmm. here in the mystical mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. the that's mystical part of the state. university, you know. The university, yeah. Here in Bloomington. Actually, uh, that's one of the major factors really in this community is the university. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a large force, a large moral force in the community. It's created many beautiful things. Yeah. Yeah, like that building that we're looking at right Check now. Check it out. I think Check that, out that building. That makes the university worthwhile, in our opinion, at least. Indiana, the mystical state. Oh. Yeah, you know, Indiana Jones was from here, and, and so was uh, Jim, uh, what's the guy that poisoned all those people? Well, that's Jim an interesting Morrison. observation that you made there. What? Indiana Jones, actually, yes. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and who else was from here? Hoagie Carmichael was from here. And of course, you know, he invented the hoagie, so that's mystical. If there was ever anything mystical about anything, it was the hoagie. Back home again in Indiana, every science fiction movie written, including 2001 by Stanley Kubrick, all these books and movies bring everybody back to Indiana. How did it begin? How did it end? People often ask that, but nobody knows. <clears throat> it probably began be before all of us were born, we're back to nonlinear existence, which makes everything confusing. To the best that I can figure out, I was Rudrananda before Rudrananda, be pardon me, became Rudrananda. When I entered this life in 1951, I had full cognitive awareness of who I was. My first conscious thought was, I'm alive, this is cool, but I'm helpless. I can't move. I can pee, this is great, but I can't move. What is the purpose of life here on this planet? Well, that's a tough question, I suppose. I know, it's a tough thing to tackle, but we don't shy away from big issues on this TV show. <laughs> uh-uh, so watch this. It's a consciousness called God, and each of us are part of the consciousness. Every human being is like a little plasmoid piece of of God's consciousness. And each one of you is here to develop and become part of God. It's like a growing process endlessly over the years. And it doesn't matter to God how long it takes. It may have taken me several thousands of years to reach this point, but each and every one of you will eventually reach this spiritual point. That's the purpose of the God colony. You're a colonized planet put here by God to mature into God. You know, from time to time, people write into us here on this little silly show of ours. And we wanted to share some of that mail with you. So here we are wandering around in Bloomington, Indiana, in the wet streets of this uh, crazy little town here. And uh, actually, we're, we're going down to the store, and I figured on the way we could read some viewer mail. So uh, here we go. This is from Name and Address Withheld Upon Request. Dear JNB, I felt compelled to write and thank you for the bold and inventive programming alternative you provide for the community at large. Bless you and the work you do. 
Imagine my excitement when I viewed your episode number 46, How to Load Fruit. I laughed, I cried, I rode the roller coaster of human emotion. Uh, to think my letter, the zygote, for an entire episode. I feel I have somehow touched the matrix and through that experience have been reborn. Too bad the load, loading part didn't seem to work. Yes, uh, as you're seeing on the screen right now, yet another clip from that episode. Um, yeah, we had a little trouble with the uh, loading of the fruit. Now gotten ourselves a whole uh, fresh new um, shot glass of, uh, of rum. And we're gonna pour it into the, uh, the grapefruit nose item. Uh, yet again, I've poured more on the table than then went into here. So here's here's what I'm going to do. Fuck the shot glass. I'm just going to pour it all in. So Good here things. we go. Oh dear. Overflow. Overflow. Gosh, I guess he's had too much to drink because he sure looks out. like he's had too much to drink. Yeah. Uh, I was leafing through some old snapshots the other day and got to thinking about all the great drinks we used to enjoy out on the prairie when I was in public school. I offer a couple of recipes for your approval. One is the hop skip here. It's two gallons of instant lemonade mixed in a big orange got cooler. One bottle of Everclear, <laughs> three bottles of domestic beer. Mix in ingredients and serve with ice off the tailgate of a pickup truck. Well, gosh, that's... Any pickup trucks? Yeah, there? I don't see any pickup trucks. Well, there's one down there, but, but we don't have a got sorry, cooler. But that's not ours, is it? No, it's not really ours. And, of course, we're such law-abiding citizens that we'll have to leave that alone. So, now here's another one, though. The high school days. One can of orange crush soda and one ounce of Everclear. Serve with ice and make sure mom doesn't find out. Name and re address withheld upon request. P.S. Kudos on the award. Oh, that, we got an award for one of our episodes. You are truly artists that use magnetic tape for a canvas and life as a palette. All hail the funky young gods of media. All hail J and B. <laughs> well, hot dog. You know, we can actually make this, this high school days drink right now. I've got a cup. And actually, I've been carrying this bottle of, of Everclear around in my pocket. Just in for, case. Just in case an, 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 uh, something like this happened. So it's a good thing. You know, always be prepared. Just like Jesus on the cross said something about being thirsty and he wanted a drink. So, um, so we're going to go over to that store there and we can, we can there buy ourselves some Orange Crush and make the drink. So there we go. So I got my can of Orange Crush. Now, this is not an endorsement. It's just a can of orange soda. Isn't there something mystical about this place? Mystical. It's the holy chapel of consumerism. Basting the sacrament to the high school days god of consumerism um, slash orange crush thing. So I guess the first thing you want to add to this cup, um, which should have some ice in it, but we didn't bring any because we're a little bit unprepared. But um, nonetheless, just imagine, use your brain, have a mystical experience with us, and believe in the unbelievable. Add about an ounce of this Everclear um, to, to, the, uh, to the glass. Um, you'll notice how it shimmers in the sunlight uh -oh. smells because, because of its, its spiritual properties. Um, then uh, you want to open your can of Orange Crush and say a little prayer to the gods of the sacrament. Oh, holy crush meister, master thing, die. Do something very good for me now. Okay, so there I've done that, and um, so now I'm going to pour this drink. Um, now you note that as I pour this in, um, nothing really happens except it kind of fizzes up. But that's because, you know, you can't immediately get answers to your prayers until you do something. It's a fine line. 
Wow. Gosh, I feel like I'm in some kind of a mystical daze now. Are you so confused? Oh, because this is Jane Beyond the Rocks, that, that silly show on Channel 3 um, sometimes, and sometimes it's on other channels, depending on where you are and who you are. But that's the question, who are we? Son, what's wrong with you? 2,000 years from now, we won't be having any discussions about what drugs are, how drugs are used, or what the benefit is to society. I think everybody pretty much knows, as Rudrananda said, that you can use drugs to force the psyche open. And masters have been doing it for years. But we're talking about 60-year-old men. We're talking about masters who have already mastered their world and the world's beyond time itself under certain conditions doing expansive drug use. I mean, we all know they do it. And if you ask me, do I do it? Well, you might one day find me on a mountaintop or an Aztec pyramid in the middle of a summer night in Mexico with half a dozen priests getting wide with God. It's possible. <laughs> it's very difficult for me to talk about, but what I can tell you right now is that our society needs to just dry up for a while. My advice to you is that as an emerging society, the drugs have really screwed up society. Just say no. <clears throat> just say no was was fun. The, yeah, he says he invented that. Now, what do you think about that? It's just a real simple phrase, just say no. It's subliminal programming, just say no, just say no. Repeated over and over and over again, pretty soon people just, just say no. They will do it. They'll just say no. Why what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. And I want you to put it on every video game in the country. Put it right on the screen so every time a kid pops a quarter in, it says, just say no. And this will build over a period of time, the subliminal will win. And the agents are writing this down, they're going, all right, put the slogan, just say no on all the video games. And I said, that's it. And this agent looked at me and he goes, he sort of looked at another agent and they sort of, they said, Roger, what's a video game? <laughs> I said, oh yeah, that's right. You don't have them yet, do you? Don't worry, they'll be on every street corner in the country. So what are they? They're like computer games, man. A computer game, don't, you know, the little pong pong thing? Yeah, yeah, well, pretty soon there'll be video games. They'll be everywhere. Okay, so when the video games get here, we put them on the machines. You got it. Just say I'm confused. That's the new slogan that we're coming up with here on J and Beyond the Rocks. So just say I'm confused. We're back to the illusion that I've created. The illusion is that something is, I, I call it an illusion because it's easier to deal with if I call it an illusion. I call it a mystical illusion. The illusion may have been created by the Central Intelligence Agency or by myself or by God. But yes, Indiana has something to do with it. Now, whether that's because I'm from Indiana or whether Indiana just has something to do with it, that's up for you to decide. But you will discover a massive amount of information that leads back to Indiana. It could have nothing more to do with this conversation, the fact that this is where it is beginning. It has to begin someplace. J and B on the locks, rocks, where it just gets darker and dimmer. And as the evening goes on. Yeah. I'm sure you understand that. Yeah, at least you've picked up on that concept, right? Yeah. I hope. Well, alcohol is an absolutely worthless product. <laughs> you yeah, have a choice, smoke, smoke a joint. joint. <laughs> I, like, I like to have fun with the government, and uh, we sat down discussing all of this, what was going to happen next, and we're all sitting in the room. I said, hey, do you guys mind if I roll a joint? Of course, everybody just cracks up. They're under the table. They're trying to stay together. I said, well, yeah, it's okay. I was just teasing them. You know, do you mind if I roll a joint? And they're trying to be straight about this. 
I said, Jesus, Roger, you know, you found the DEA. What do you mean you want to roll a joint? I, I better explain this quickly. When I formed the DEA, it's, it's because they showed me dead bodies. Um, the way they got me involved um, after the big raid was to, uh, they took me to a morgue and they showed me a slabs with dead teenagers on them and said these kids died because of these drugs and you could help us stop this and uh, I looked at them I said who killed these two kids and they showed me a picture of Noriega I said he did it I said really this guy where is he you know well, he's in Panama can you get him for us yeah no problem just send me my boys message to the youth <laughs> what wait what that is our message to the youth. Only your body is young. It's an illusion. Your spirit is ancient. As you enter each cycle of life, you begin as a child and you grow. You experience. Uh, believe me when I tell you that you're a very ancient individual, just as I am. And you will discover that probably around the time when you reach about 60 or 70 ago. Ah, uh, now I got it figured out. Uh, don't become confused by your youth. Well, that about does it for the mystical state. We've kind of returned to normal here in the... Well, Jay is just waking up, actually, from that stupor. Ah, uh, yes, the mystical state that I've been in throughout this episode. And mm. we wanted to say thanks for watching, and uh, we hope you'll tune in next week. Uh, yeah, to Jay and Beyond the Rocks, this show here. We'll bring you something yeah. very special, we promise you, for our 50th anniversary. Golden showers. So, until then, see ya. relationships between the performers herein, the CIA, the Department of Justice, the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration, uh, the uh, Roman Catholic Church and reality in general is hereby disclaimed as theatrical props in a fictional performance. And uh, that should just about cover everybody's complaints about anything that we talk about here today. So whether I'm really a time traveler from another world, which of course I am, or I'm just a super genius who managed to create this massive complex puzzle that nobody can get out of, it doesn't really matter. The, the only thing that matters now is it's, it, the dream itself is taking form. You can't get out of the dream. It's become so complex that none of us really know the truth. I'm not even sure that I do. <laughs> oh, God has such a sense of humor. The, uh, the best description is, I think, when Rudy died was, I went crazy at that moment. I mean, I remember thinking, this isn't sane. There's somebody else inside my head. It was like, hi, how are you? Yeah, well, I'm here. Oh, great. It's not fictional. It's real. You transmigrated. I thought you said you were going to be silent. Well, I got to say, I got to say something. You got to know I'm here. Well, this is good. Now I've lost my mind completely. And that's, that is, that's the impact. You know, well, you're a priest. You're supposed to be able to handle this. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So you just, you know, let's just think this thing through. Now be gentle with your editing. When you get something really crazy, get rid of it, you know? <laughs> Think to yourself, they would ruin everything. Just dump it. So you so, should stay tuned for this next show that's coming up here because it's called the video show. And it's very good. And, and it's you new. You watch it every week. Yeah, this is like its new Tuesday night slot. The video, video show. Video show. Yeah. Every Tuesday night at eleven thirty.